The Occupy movement has energized protesters across the country. And while a call for fundamental changes to the economy is heard throughout, many sites are addressing long standing local issues, whether it's access to public space in New York or police brutality in Oakland. In Baltimore, a growing number of people are turning their attention to the city's model of urban development and renewal. Calling for fair development, residents and activists are demanding greater democratic participation, transparency, and a commitment to economic human rights from the city's quasi public development corporation that uses public funds for private development. And their actions are starting to get results. FSRN's Clayton Kahn reports. As Occupy movements across the country continue to plan their next steps, a group of participants from Occupy Baltimore has joined city residents and activists in targeting the city's model of urban development. John Duda, a 33-year-old participant of Occupy Baltimore, says that the Occupy movement has helped him to examine the role of urban development as part of local systemic issues. Sort of taking that energy and taking that you know, willingness to really confront the system and actually starting to think about where the system needed confronting. Um, and in Baltimore, there's a lot of things that are wrong. Um, and there's a lot of things that are wrong beyond just the banks have a lot of money or the banks have a lot of power. There's a lot of things deeply messed up with the way development happens in the city and the way development priorities are set. Duda, along with a group of residents and activists, are demanding fundamental changes to the operations of the Baltimore Development Corporation, or BDC, the quasi public nonprofit development firm that uses public funds for the city's major private development projects. For them, the BDC represents a model of urban development that prioritizes private interests in corporations over being transparent and accountable to the public. Colin Nowalikowski, also a participant of Occupy Baltimore, explains. Their primary function seems to be channeling money and development towards large corporations, towards private development, um, helping and facilitating subsidies to those corporations, and um, under the name of development, often uh, demolishing independent businesses, independent communities with very little oversight, with very little neighborhood input, with very little input from the labor community, from the faith community, and other uh, aspects of the communities that they heavily impact. The group of residents and activists, calling itself Another BDC is Possible, recently pressured the Development Corporation's president, Jay Brody, to attend an open-air public meeting outside of its offices. With a crowd that numbered well over 150 people and a mock boardroom setup, complete with plants and an agenda board, residents and community leaders were able to air their concerns and demands directly to Mr. Brody, who is notoriously resistant to open dialogue with the public. Community leader and Reverend Heber Brown III challenged the BDC's claim that it works in the best interest of all of Baltimore City declaring that it excludes the mostly African-American population in development projects, including its current projects with Johns Hopkins University and its relationship to East Baltimore Development Incorporated, also known as EBDI. Uh, to me, I, I see uh, the, the almost complete decimation of the black community in East Baltimore, where Hopkins and EBDI have cleared out whole swaths of the black community to make way for the continuing expansion of the Hopkins complex, and that's that's strange fruit to me. And so when I think about what's wrong with the BDC and my, my critique of the BDC, it comes down to that strange fruit. And it comes down to the lack of participation, the lack of input, uh, and the lack of, of transparency and accountability, particularly when it comes to the majority community in the city. The public meeting also provided a space where residents and activists were able to articulate ways in which the BDC could embody a model of what they call fair development. Casey McKeel, one of the organizers of the meeting, read a letter outlining some of these alternatives. The BDC needs to ensure that all city-supported development results in good jobs with living wages and dignity. Through binding agreements with clawback provisions that take back subsidies when these benefits don't materialize. We need an economic development agency that works for us and with us, letting us determine the priorities to be pursued and the strategies to be followed. The open-air meeting and the public pressure had an impact. BDC President Brody conceded to having an open dialogue with a diverse delegation of community members. And I would like to think that we could enter into some further civilized conversations, whether we end up agreeing a little or a lot. If we disagree, 
I'd like to think we can disagree without being disagreeable. So our doors are going to be open for conversations. So if there is a delegation of people that we could continue to meet and talk with, that might be helpful. But as long as I'm around, I am happy and willing to have dialogue. And wherever it goes, it goes. As a gesture of good faith, the BDC agreed to publicly post all of their board meeting minutes online, including the minutes from the open-air public meeting. Participants of Another BDC is Possible and Occupy Baltimore are now organizing the makeup of the delegation that is due to meet with the BDC in the coming weeks. Clayton Kahn, FSRN, Baltimore.